Hi again then guys and welcome to another instalment of Weekend Warriors on Gran Turismo 6 in particular and this time we're featuring a vehicle which I always refer to by a slightly different name on Gran Turismo because to be fair I don't like this version of the car not because of its performance it's not necessarily worse than the other version I just don't like the name as much I prefer this as the Infiniti G37 I just think that's a better model name and I think the badge suits the car better than a Nissan one on the game though it is under the Nissan dealership as the Skyline 370 GT Coupe which to me just isn't as cool a name Skyline of course is but Anyone who's anyone knows that this isn't really a Skyline anyway. It's kind of somewhere between Skyline and Fair Lady Z. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not a Skyline. Come on now. Now, the engine on this car is, as the name suggests, a 3.7 litre. It's naturally aspirated, interestingly, and you cannot turbo or supercharge that engine. But, with that being said... The numbers are quite good. It's got 521 horsepower, fully tuned, 371 pound-feet of torque. Those are decent enough numbers, and the weight is not overly high. It's not amazingly good, but you probably wouldn't expect it to be. The car's a little bulky, it's pretty well equipped inside and out. It's a much more Americanized vehicle than the Skyline proper is, and it weighs 1,329 kilos. That's not too bad. It's workable, for sure. It's not ridiculously heavy by any means. And the horsepower per ton is nearly 400, which is certainly more than good enough to run with plenty of other coupes in this series. Now, it's not all-wheel drive. Again, not too surprising, but again, severing another tie with a typical Skyline, especially the GTRs. And the PP level varies quite a bit depending on whether or not you choose to have a flat floor or not. Without the flat floor, it sits at 540, which is pretty good. With it, it jumps up to 566, so a pretty huge difference. And of course, flat floors make a big difference to any car that you fit them on. As far as whether or not you should put it on this one, that's a different question. Because it certainly makes it better through corners, but the straight line speed that you do sacrifice, top end in particular, that's where you're going to need to decide if you want to sacrifice that, and also of course, if you're tuning it for the same PP level, say 540 for instance, well if you do choose to fit the flat floor you're going to have to either add a lot of weight or reduce the power a lot to get it back down to that same level with the flat floor fitted. So all of these kind of things of course vary from driver to driver and the tuning depending on what you need it for. I personally think this is a pretty good car for the 500 to 525 PP level. It's pretty good for that. Now the straight line speed isn't incredible. It's nowhere near as quick as say an R32, 3 or 4. And to be honest, even an R31 can give this a pretty good run for its money. But it's not slow, that's for sure. It can easily go way beyond 200 even without NOS. And the acceleration is pretty good. Again, it makes a great rival to something like a 350Z or 370Z. And plenty of others, of course, outside of Nissan also. Now the price tag is... I would say surprisingly good. This could quite easily be a 60, 70, maybe 75,000 credit car, but it's not. It's 44, just under 45 in fact. And I would say that's pretty much perfect for a car that is a premium in both senses of the word. I mean, it's a full detailed premium, but in real life it's a premium style vehicle. It's more luxurious than a typical Skyline or a GTR, especially from back in the day, would be. Now, in terms of its trackability, we already mentioned the PP level and the variation that you're going to have to have, but it's a surprisingly good all-rounder for a car that has virtually none of the advantages of a GTR, especially, of course, the nearest GTR, which would be the R34. Overall, it's a good track car, but not quite a great one. The handling is smooth, it's quite beginner-friendly. Of course, again, you don't have the all-wheel drive advantage to save you, but the handling is more than friendly enough and more than forgiving enough to run with rear wheel drive even with full power and 521 horsepower is easy to underestimate in the world of GT6 with our huge numbers but that's no slouch that's a lot of power for this car to have and it handles it very well plus the visual upgrades on a slight side note I think look pretty interesting on this model you can personalize it to some degree and I originally had this one set up as kind of a GT24 N24 style Nordschleifer race car, basically an endurance machine around the 500 or 520 pp level. So again, 
it's got potential, for sure. It's not a car which I think everyone will love, but at the same time, I don't think anyone could really hate this car. Even I don't hate the fact that it's called a Skyline, I would just prefer if it were in the Infiniti dealership. It's not exactly like Nissan needs more cars on Gran Turismo, why not put it in the Infiniti dealership to boost their numbers a little bit? They certainly deserve it. But, be that as it may, it's a car which has really nothing to dislike, it's pretty good at everything. It's not outstanding at any particular thing though, so as long as you have the right mindset approaching this vehicle, as I said, expect it to be more like a fair lady than a skyline and you won't be disappointed don't expect it to be the best thing ever but i don't think many people would be it's an interesting alternative to some more obvious sports car choices and it is one which could definitely give you some victories so overall i would definitely recommend checking this car out if you fancy trying something a bit different in fact very different to any of the other gtrs in the game and overall that's it for this particular pick so i'll see you guys next time and as always thanks for watching